Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sangeeta Chaudhary once again and I welcome everybody to my class today. In my today's class, I am going to discuss about the art of history taking part 2. In my previous lectures, I have discussed about the art of history taking which was part 1 and today basically I am going to focus on the history taking of cardiovascular system. Okay, so uh, we really need to master the art of history taking because it is something by which we can diagnose at least 80 to 90 percent of the cases only from history taking. So history taking has such a huge importance in medicine. Okay, so uh, let's begin with the art of history taking. Initially, I'll tell you certain points of history taking, how we should begin taking a history. So first of all, you introduce yourself to the patient, okay? Uh, let the patient know who you are and explain the patient why you are here. What is the importance of history taking? Why you are there to take history from the patient? Now take consent before you do anything, before you take history, before you do physical examination or any procedure, you need to take consent from the patient. So take consent and then ensure that both the patient and yourself are comfortable. So sit in a comfortable place, in a comfortable room and then you start taking the history. So these are certain pearls of history taking. So before you start taking history, you really need to remember these things. Okay, This will help you to make a good repo with the patient and the patient will really, you know, cooperate in history taking. Now, flow of history taking this i have already discussed in my previous lecture okay flow of history taking actually it remains the same for any system you take history so first of all you need to take the particulars of the patient in the particulars of the patient i have already discussed that there should be name of the patient okay patient's name age sex occupation then comes religion and then address okay and date of admission in the hospital so these are the things which constitutes the particulars of the patient so first of all we need to note down these things name age sex occupation religion address and date of admission to the hospital okay next thing is chief complaint so what is chief complaint chief complaint means the complaint which has led the patient to come to the hospital okay this is chief complaint so chief complaint actually you should write in chronological order chronological order means you should write the complaint which begin which begin first that means which came first right suppose the patient had fever okay patient had fever for last 10 days so in the chief complaint you need to mention the complaint of the patient as well as the duration of the particular complaint okay then cough for last seven days okay then chest pain for last five days so this is chronology okay fever came first that is 10 days back so you write down fever as the first chief complaint then you write down cough which came second that is uh, for last seven days the patient is having cough and the third chief complaint will be chest pain which is there for last five days so this is what i mean by chronology right so this is about the chief complaint means the complaint which has uh, led the patient to come to the hospital and seek doctor's advice right next is history of present illness what do you do in the history of present illness in the history of present illness basically we need to elaborate the chief complaint okay we need to really uh, take a good history of present illness which will really help you in diagnosis of most of the cases so you elaborate the chief complaint first you give open question to the patient open question means you ask uh, the patient to describe his symptoms in his own words okay and you listen listen carefully a good doctor should be a good listener too after open question you start asking leading questions or closed questions okay leading question or closed question to make a good history of present illness 
so after that comes history of past illness in the past history you ask about a uh, similar complaints or similar sufferings in the past is there or not you ask about any chronic illnesses whether the patient is having or not personal history in the personal history you need to ask about patients you know a uh, patient's dietary habit then you need to ask about any uh, abuse of drugs or any medicines alcohol abuse smoking any recreational drug use like cocaine so these are the things will constitute the personal history any high risk behavior okay high risk behavior these things you need to ask in the personal history family history in the family history you will enquire about the family members whether the family member has similar kind of problem like our patient or not or whether there is any history of any chronic diseases in the family you need to ask about next comes drug or treatment history okay so in the drug and treatment history you need to ask the patient about the drugs patients a uh, patient is uh, on at present means if the patient is taking any drug any medicine for any kind of diseases you need to take that history of use of the drug or the particular treatment right next comes history of allergy okay in the history of allergy we need to ask if the patient has his uh, allergy uh, allergic history to any kind of uh, drugs okay any kind of foods any toxins anything okay history to any substance you need history of allergy to any substance you need to enquire about next comes socio economic history so in the socio economic history you need to ask about the social status of the patient okay patients uh, uh, you know patients housing condition if there is no overcrowding or not patients fuel source uh, drinking water source uh these things you need to ask about economic condition you need to enquire about the patient's income family income and the per capita income lastly you ask about immunization history there is a national immunization schedule you need to ask whether the patient is immunized against uh various diseases as per the immunization schedule lastly if your patient is a female then you need to ask about menstrual and obstetrical history so don't forget about this female patients you include menstrual history and obstetrical history so once again let's revise what will be the flow of uh, history taking first particulars of the patient next thing chief complaint then you elaborate all the chief complaint of the patient in history of present illness then you ask about history of past illness then personal history after personal history go to patient's family history ask about drug or treatment history history of allergy socio economic history and immunization history if you are dealing with a female patient then ask about menstrual and obstetrical history as well right so this is about the flow of history taking for any system per se okay for any patient when you are taking history you need to uh, enquire about all the subheadings i have just now told now come to the topic proper or let's focus on the cardiovascular system for today's class okay history taking in the cardiovascular system so if somebody patient uh, if somebody presents with cardiovascular system involvement the usual chief complaints are like this okay they usually complaint of chest pain dyspnea or breathlessness palpitation syncope okay these are the things okay sometime they complain of pedal edema also okay pitting pedal edema so these are the usual chief complaints of a patient who presents with involvement of the cardiovascular system now let's discuss one by one if the patient presents with chest pain as a chief complaint then how you are going to elaborate the chest pain in the history of present illness so this will be the elaboration of chest pain in the history of present illness so what are the things you are going to ask suppose we are dealing with a case of cardiac chest pain right chest pain can be because of cardiac issues or it can be non cardiac as well so this here i am talking about cardiac causes of chest pain okay how a chest pain due to cardiac cause uh, may present 
so what are the things you need to ask for you first of all you ask the location of the chest pain okay usually cardiac pain they are central in location okay they are central or we can say retrosternal okay just at the middle of the chest they will be just at the middle of the chest onset you ask about the onset whether the onset it is dramatic is it sudden or is it insidious onset okay ask about the duration that means for how long the patient is having this pain okay it is very important to know the duration of the cardiac pain because it is going to uh, help us in the management okay it has a big role the duration of cardiac pain has a big role when we manage a case of cardiac pain that is when you manage a case of angina or myocardial infarction that is very important next thing you inquire about is character of the chest pain how is the character of the chest pain usually the chest pain of cardiac illness it will be like the patient will say like the patient is feeling like um, some uh, some somebody is squeezing the chest in the middle okay squeezing kind of pain okay or constricting type okay squeezing or constricting type and the chest will feel like so much heavy okay heaviness there will be heaviness so squeezing or constricting chest pain in the middle of the chest and the chest feels like very heavy as if somebody has kept uh, so much of weight over the chest so this is the typical character of the cardiac chest pain next thing you incur about is radiation okay in cases of cardiac pain if it is because of angina or myocardial infarction the pain usually radiates it can radiate to the jaw it can radiate to the arms it can radiate to the upper back okay but remember that cardiac pain it never radiates almost almost never radiates below the umbilicus okay so it will ref, uh, it will get radiated to the jaw arms most commonly in the left arm okay left upper limb sometimes in the right arm also and in the upper back right the next thing you ask about the severity of the chest pain how severe is this chest pain for any pain you can give a patient a scale of 1 to 10 and you may ask how much the patient will score the pain more the patient scores that means more severe the pain is okay so this is this is how you can ask about the severity of the chest pain next thing you inquire about is precipitating factor ask about if there is any precipitating factor for the chest pain usually the cardiac pain they get precipitated on exertion their exertional chest pain okay because of exertion the chest pain usually starts so exertion is the major precipitating factor for cardiac pain right ask about relieving factor okay relieving factor means factor uh, which helps the pain uh, to get reduced so rest is an important relieving factor right rest rest is an important relieving factor for the cardiac pain sometimes there is one more important relieving factor that is use of nitrates we use sublingual nitrates if we suspect cardiac pain and then the pain gets dramatically relieved with the nitrates anyway ask about relieving factors and then you inquire about the course of the chest pain okay that means course of the chest pain means uh, whether the chest pain since it started whether the chest pain it got reduced or it is increasing or it is like constant okay or is it fluctuating so this is the course of the chest pain now lastly you can inquire about any previous similar episodes like similar episodes of chest pain were there in the past or not so these are in a nutshell these are the things you ask about the chest pain cardiac chest pain you are suspecting of so location onset duration character then radiation severity precipitating factors relieving factors 
course of the chest pain and previous similar episodes so please remember these things when you write history of present illness and you describe or elaborate the chest pain this is going to be really helpful so this was about the chest pain now i was talking that chest pain can be because of cardiac causes or it can be because of non cardiac chest pain as well so how we are going to differentiate between cardiac chest pain versus non cardiac chest pain so there are a few points which can differentiate between a case of cardiac chest pain or if the chest pain is non cardiac in origin so if it is cardiac in origin as i said the location will be central or retrosternal but in cases of non cardiac chest pain the location can be peripheral okay or it can be the pain can be just a localized pain okay the patient will be able to pinpoint the site of pain character cardiac pain as i said it will be like squeezing and constricting pain in the middle of the chest whereas non cardiac chest pain they do not possess a very typical uh, characteristic okay there is not much of very typical characteristic of non cardiac chest pain radiation i have already discussed about the radiation in the cardiac pain it will be in the jaw upper back arm bilateral upper limb okay but in cases of non cardiac chest pains they usually do not get radiated okay there is not much of uh, radiation in cases of non cardiac chest pain aggravating factor for cardiac pain i have already mentioned it is exertion okay exertion aggravates cardiac chest pain and in cases of non cardiac chest pain aggravating factor can be uh, you know can be um, deep breathing okay deep inspiration deep breathing can increase pain of uh, pleuritus that is of respiratory origin it can increase the pain of musculoskeletal origin also deep breathing sometimes change of posture can also aggravate uh, non cardiac chest pain just for example if i can say pancreatitis the pain of pancreatitis okay the patient feels more pain when the patient lies down and if the patient gets sit up with bending forward position there is relief of the pain so posture deep breathing these things usually can aggravate non cardiac chest pain depending on the origin of the chest pain non cardiac uh, just to mention that non cardiac chest pain non cardiac chest pain may be of respiratory origin it may be because of you know mus- musculoskeletal musculoskeletal system involvement sometimes chest pain can be due to esophagitis or gerd esophagitis okay or G- gastroesophageal reflux disease or it may be as a result of pancreatitis also okay so these are certain causes of non cardiac causes of chest pain right other differentiating factor a relieving factor as i said cardiac pain it gets relieved with rest whereas non cardiac chest pain it does not have uh, you know you cannot correlate with much of the relieving factor or sometimes it depends on the source of the pain associated features in cases of cardiac pain the associated features may be you know in, there may be um, there may be breathing difficulty there may be breathing difficulty there may be pedal edema there may be palpitation so these are the usual associated factor of the cardiac chest pain but if it is non cardiac chest pain okay if it is non cardiac chest pain then depending on the source there will be associated factors for example if it is of respiratory source the patient will have cough okay patient may have hemoptysis okay patient may have fever if there is pneumonic pneumonia okay so this is uh, the associated factor will depend on the source of the non cardiac chest pain so this is about how we differentiate between cardiac and non cardiac chest pain this is very important because from the clinical history itself you can differentiate whether the patient who has come to you with chest pain it is because of involvement of cardiovascular system or it is a case of non cardiac chest pain right the next uh, chief complaint i was talking about is dyspnea or breathlessness okay this is again one of the very important and common chief complaint of a patient of cardiovascular system involvement again you need to ask about onset how is the onset it is a sudden onset dyspnea or it is 
like insidious in onset so onset is onset can be either sudden or it can be insidious means slow onset ask about the degree or severity of the breathlessness now how do we ask about the degree or severity of the breathlessness okay if the breathlessness is present at rest that is the most severe kind of grading okay severe grade of breathlessness and initially the patient usually they starts having breathlessness on exertional activity okay so initially patient starts having breathlessness on exertion then you need to ask after how much exertion the patient develops breathlessness after doing what the patient develops breathlessness then the patient may progress to higher grades of breathlessness where there will be limitation of limitation of even a uh, day to day activity okay patients day to day daily activity also will be limited okay and in very severe grade there will be dyspnea even at rest breathlessness even at rest so this is how we ask about the degree or the severity of the breathlessness then ask about the duration for how long the patient is having breathlessness and the course of the breathlessness that means breathlessness is it increasing is it decreasing or is it remaining the same or is it fluctuating again you ask about the aggravating factor or relieving factor of and relieving factor of the breathlessness so aggravating factor of breathlessness usually cardiac breathlessness cardiac origin breathlessness it aggravates with exertion just like chest pain okay it aggravates with exertion and uh, it gets relieved with rest but sometimes during various very severe grade of breathlessness even the patient will have breathlessness at rest and as i said ask about the course of the breathlessness what is the course that means whether it's increasing is it decreasing or is it uh, remaining same if the patient presents with breathlessness you really need to ask about orthopnea and pnd okay this orthopnea and pnd are the major factor which are going to differentiate the cardiac cause of breathlessness okay cardiac cause of breathlessness or uh, shortness of breath as to be sense for shortness of breath so cardiac cause of breath, uh, shortness of breath they do have orthopnea and sometimes they do have pnd whereas if breathlessness is because of respiratory system involvement because we know that respiratory system involvement can give rise to breathlessness very well as well so they will not have orthopnea or pnd if it is respi cause of okay respiratory cause of shortness of breath so this is very important now what is orthopnea orthopnea means breathing difficulty in lying down position if a patient is having cardiac breathlessness then the patient will really give you the history that as soon as i lie down i have i start having breathing difficulty i cannot lie down flat or the patient will say that patient needs to use two pillows three pillows four pillows okay to get relieved of the breathlessness on lying supine so breathlessness feeling breathlessness on supine position is known as the orthopnea right now what is pnd okay what is pnd pnd stands for paroxysmal okay paroxysmal nocturnal nocturnal dyspnea okay nocturnal means it it occurs on the at night time so what is pnd pnd what happens in pnd okay it actually appears after 1 to 2 hours of sleep at night okay suppose the patient has gone to sleep and the patient has slept for 1 to 2 hours suddenly patient wakes up with uh, you know too much of breathlessness patient gasps for breath this is about pnd or paroxysm and nocturnal dyspnea and it is typical of cardiovascular system involvement so if there is history positive for orthopnea positive for pnd you know that the you are dealing with a cardiovascular system involvement next chief complaint as i was telling it can be palpitation so what is palpitation how a patient will say that patient has palpitation actually in patient's words pa- patient will say that there is abnormal awareness of patient's own heartbeat normally we cannot feel our own heartbeat okay 
but if we start feeling our own heartbeat it is known as the palpitations abnormal awareness of one's own heartbeat so if somebody is complaining of palpitation we need to ask whether the palpitation is it regular or is it irregular okay this again carries important meaning if a palpitation is irregular it can be because of atrial fibrillation okay atrial fibrillation in theory lectures i'll tell you what is atrial fibrillations okay aggravating factor of the palpitation palpitation can get aggravated by exertion okay it can aggravated by it can be aggravated by exertion sometimes it can be aggravated by lying down position okay lying down position in cases of regurgitant lesion okay suppose the patient is having aortic regurgitation or mitral regurgitation in cases of regurgitant lesion it increases palpitation increases on lying down so lying down becomes an aggravating factor of palpitation in cases of regurgitant lesion so just remember that now ask about relieving factors okay sometimes rest can relieve the patient of palpitation and in cases of regurgitant lesion if the patient sits up or stands up there will be uh, somewhat the patient will get relieved of the palpitation so ask about regularity ask about aggravating factor relieving factor for the palpitation or abnormal awareness of one's own heartbeat okay then we have syncope as a chief complaint what is syncope syncope is a very short episode a very brief episode of loss of consciousness so brief episode of lapse of consciousness is known as syncope it is usually of few seconds duration and the patient recovers spontaneously okay so this can also be one of the chief complaint of cardiovascular system involvement okay uh, one more chief complaint i was telling about is edema so the patient may complain of bilateral peating pedal edema right bilateral peating pedal edema so we need to ask when it started we need to ask about the onset we need to ask about the duration then we need to ask about progression that means whether the edema is increasing or not or is it static okay any aggravating and relieving factor these things we need to ask about if there is presence of edema right next so this was all about the history of present illness means history in the history of present illness how we are going to describe or how we are going to uh, going to discuss or elaborate about the chief complaints with which the patient has come to the hospital so after describing chief complaints what you need to do you need to ask questions about you know uh, other systems as well you need to ask about questions like uh pertaining to respiratory system then uh, genito urinary system and other systems like gastrointestinal system to rule out systemic inquiry it is known as systemic inquiry okay systemic inquiry means ask about other system respi system then gastrointestinal system ask about musculoskeletal system ask about genito urinary system ask about central nervous system so uh, just enquire about all the system in a nutshell to know if there is involvement of any other system in the same patient or not right so this will give you an idea about involvement of other system as well so this will complete your history of present illness okay one more thing what you need to do is that you need to ask certain a uh, very important negative history also it's not that it's not always that you ask only about positive history so you take important negative history also negative history to rule out involvement of other systems other than cardiovascular system so this will complete the uh, history taking for cardiovascular system the uh, history taking the part of his, um, history of present illness right so next comes history of past illness so what you are going to ask in cases of past illness for cvs involvement you are going to ask about similar episodes similar episodes of chest pain dyspnea and all 
you're going to ask about any past history of myocardial infarction stroke rheumatic heart disease or rheumatic fever or valvular heart disease is there or not any history of hypertension type 2 diabetes dyslipidemia are there or not because all of them they constitute major risk factors for myocardial infarction any history of thyroid disorder from the past ask about surgical history okay surgical history means whether the patient had to undergo any surgery for uh, involvement of the heart whether the patient underwent stenting okay stenting coronary stenting whether the patient underwent coronary artery bypass graft whether the patient underwent any valve replacement surgery or not okay so these are the important surgical interventions which are done to a cardiac patient stenting of coronary coronary artery bypass grafting and valve replacement surgery inquire about these things in the past and also inquire about any history of prior hospitalization if it is positive prior hospitalization then you ask about uh the episode what had happened why the patient was admitted and then what was the uh, course of treatment how long it took for the patient to get recovered and all so ask in detail if the patient had any history of prior hospitalization next thing personal history it remains almost same for any uh any system involvement ask about smoking okay you ask the patient uh, about for how long the patient was uh, smoking duration of smoking and amount how much the patient smokes a day and then you calculate pack year of smoking okay pack year of smoking so if you know uh, how many sticks the patient is taking how many sticks of cigarette the patient is taking for how many years you can calculate the pack year of smoking it will give you the uh, you know it is used to risk stratify the uh, for risk stratification of the patient who smokes alcohol ask about uh you know uh for how long the patient is drinking and then what type of alcohol the patient is drinking means strength strength of the alcohol and calculate the amount of alcohol in gram per day okay that will help you again in the risk stratification of the patient any use of any recreational drug you ask for sometimes cocaine which is used as a recreational drug can give rise to angina because of coronary vasospasm okay cocaine results in angina ask about the diet ask about uh, whether the patient is taking any balanced diet or not if there is an increased amount of uh, you know fatty food in the diet and you inquire about the salt intake as well so this is about diet ask about exercise habit whether the patient does any regular exercise or not so this will constitute the important personal history right so this is about the personal history then family history okay we are coming towards the end family history again you ask about the similar illness similar illness of uh, cardiovascular system is there or not in the family member ask about scd scd stands for sudden cardiac death okay ask about sudden cardiac death in young family members okay sudden cardiac death in young family members okay young family members it can be sudden cardiac death can be a result of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy hocm hocum hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy it can be as a result of long qt syndrome okay there are named syndrome long qt syndrome this can result in sudden cardiac death and you inquire about any chronic illness like diabetes hypertension any other uh, systemic diseases in the family okay this will really help you in making a diagnosis lastly uh, after family history of course you are going to take you are going to uh, take all those uh, drug history treatment history allergy history social economic history immunization history menstrual and obstetrical history ultimately after taking all the history you need to summarize the history okay you need to make a summary of the history means it should be around five or six sentences summary where you include all the important positive points from the history right then next step you make a provisional diagnosis from the history which is a very important thing to do 
and then next you proceed for the physical examination where you confirm your provisional diagnosis okay history taking as i said history taking will help you in making up to 80 to 90 percent of the diagnosis and then you need to confirm your diagnosis by physical examination and then with the help of investigation so this is all about history taking in a patient of cardiovascular system i wanted to discuss today i hope that this class was helpful thank you so much for your patience hearing and i think from now on you can really apply this knowledge of history taking when you are in the bedside clinics so thank you so much for attending the class and uh, of course i'll be taking more classes on history uh, taking as uh, many of my uh, viewers you have already you know you have already requested about classes on history taking and physical examination definitely i am going to do that thank you so much